Welcome back to the Budget Gamer channel where we bring you critical and in-depth reviews of just about every indie game we can get our hands on and today we're going to be taking a look at Uchu Shinshuchu Most Impure Kiss for the Nintendo Switch. And yeah, that took like five takes to get right. That is a mouthful of title. And I really wouldn't be surprised if almost none of you have heard of this one before because it is a really, really quirky little title. As a somewhat penny arcade style action platformer, you don't really expect to get much of a story more than just a scenario, and our scenario is as unique as the gameplay itself. Opening up with a bit of graphic novel style intro, we see that the entire world has been overrun by hordes of alien forces, and as scientists are starting to experiment on one of the cutesy little aliens, our main character and femme fatale bursts in to seduce it with a kiss, converting it over to her side and then going off to help her win the war against the aliens. And this does act as the foundation for our motivation and for the actual gameplay mechanics for the entirety of Uchu Shinshuchu. As an arcade style action platformer, you shouldn't expect too much diversity and just from the visuals and plot, you can tell this game doesn't take itself too seriously. And as we saw in the opening visuals, your one and only innate weapon is your seductive kiss. And unfortunately, the, you don't get any defenses either. There's no dodge rolls. If you jump on an enemy, you're dead. If an enemy touches you, you're dead. If you go in for a kiss and miss your timing, you're probably gonna die. And so yeah, this is why I said it was more of the penny arcade style gameplay. It is fast, you die a lot, you keep going. And there's not really much more to the gameplay than the actual standards of gameplay that you get in the very first level all the way through level 50. But if you did look at the description on the eShop and you saw, oh, okay, wild creatures, catch them, they fight for you, this must be something like Digimon or Pokemon, you are really, really far from the truth. As you're playing through the game and kissing all the creatures, you're not really capturing them and making them allies, you're actually making them into spendable resources. And so while kissing a creature will position its cute little avatar walking behind you in the screen until the level's end, that's more of just a graphic representation for the sake of menu navigation. Every one of the creatures that you manage to kiss actually gets banked into an actionable inventory that can be navigated with the L and R bumpers. And so watching your selection at the bottom left corner of the screen to know which character you have selected at present, instead of having them fight for you, you actually get to lob them across the screen at other enemies. But again, a minor nuance to consider is even though you're hurling your new compatriots at the given enemy, it doesn't quite work as an attack. The main character of the game has used her wiles to seduce these enemy aliens, but the aliens themselves aren't capable of transmitting that full level of seduction. And yeah, this game dynamic took me just a little while to work out for myself. Hurling allies at enemies kind of transfers that seductive power into creating a bit of a stun lock. But it's not any enemy that can stun lock any other one, it has to be a like level or higher meaning that it might take multiple lower level critters to actually seduce and stun lock one of the higher ones. As you do lob your newfound friends across the screen to hopefully stun lock an enemy character though, you are spending them as a resource, so you'll need to make sure that you're using them wisely. Additionally, as I mentioned, hearkening back to, to when I said that you will die a lot and quickly and often, there are a couple of other things that you need to keep in mind, such as the fact that if you die at any point in the game, you will restart at the beginning of the level or at the beginning of the boss room, but you will likely be minus all but one of the enemies you've managed to seduce, and yeah, that, that will be the lowest level one you can get. And as completing any one of the action platforming stages requires the seduction of all enemies in the area, you will have to start from scratch and rebuild your inventory. But as you get a handle on the platforming, as you get a handle on your ranges for close and long range attacks, clearing out all the enemies in the random stages isn't really that much of a challenge. But as the general mechanics of Uchu Shinshuchu are pretty darn straightforward as a very, very clear action platformer, minus the quirk of the gameplay method, it is now time to get into the presentation. Obviously, a game called The Most Impure Kiss doesn't take itself too terribly seriously, and that is represented in the graphics as well. They are clean, they are bright, they are vibrant, and honestly, the character sprites are really well done. And so I'd have to say for the visual presentation, knowing what the game is about, it's, it's exactly what it should be. But that's not exactly the same for the soundtrack. This is a quick action game. You die, you go forward, you die, you move on. And the soundtrack is suitably high energy, but the tracks are nearly identically short. 
But while you're probably going to be concerned about kissing your enemies and saving your bacon, you might not exactly notice the repetition in the soundtrack as much as you might in the sound effects. But as this game probably wasn't meant for marathon gaming sessions, again, that's, that's probably exactly what it needs to be for the type of game that it is. And as I'm sure you can guess, a game this quirky will have some things you might want to know about before diving in. And first and foremost, diving into the critiques is actually going to be that whole death mechanic where you lose your inventory, specifically how it relates to the boss fights. Bosses are pretty straightforward. They have a visible HP bar, you hit them a certain number of times, you take them down. But the problem is, well, uh, one of the problems is, is that their moves aren't telegraphed, they move pretty quick, and they can do animation cancels. Which means that while in a game that you die with just one hit, you would kind of be expecting the bosses to telegraph a bit more, so you'd have an opportunity to dodge, that doesn't really come through in Uchu Shinshuchu. And so the boss combat actually is incredibly tight, as far as the margins for error. And being that taking one hit will kill you and wipe out your entire inventory that can give you some distance from the boss, that means that you'd probably have to go back and replay through levels without ever dying to be able to build up enough of an inventory to actually help you take down the boss on the next run. Which, as I'm sure you can guess, means actually defeating a boss after you take the opportunities to learn its attack patterns, which don't have much of a pattern you will be spending a lot of time going back and farming, succumbing to an accidental death, and rinse a lot of the repeat until you get it right. Other than that, one of the biggest notes of consideration, especially if you are thinking about this game like, wow, that sounds like a good challenge, I really think I could tackle it, that probably means that you're one of the more technical platforming gamers out there with some actual experience, which means that for shaky or unpredictable hitboxes, you're probably gonna end up breaking something. And Uchu Shinchuchu does provide a very unpredictable threshold for what counts as a hit or what doesn't. And I found myself dying several dozen times when I either didn't touch an enemy or had ducked under something and still gotten hit, which makes me think there's probably a larger rectangle around the character's entire avatar that counts as the player's hitbox. And while that is definitely an area that could use some real deep polishing, one of the other considerations is actually pretty simple and straightforward. As a Penny Arcade style action platformer, you don't really expect much development in the actual gameplay mechanics. And in this game, you really don't get it. What you experience in level 1 is the same thing you're going to be experiencing in level 51, but the levels might just be a little bit longer, the enemies might be just a little bit more challenging, and there might be a lot more of them. But, moving on, the final consideration would have to be the price. Uchu Shinchuchu, while it is definitely unique. And while it's quirky and fun, it is being offered for an $8 price tag, even right now, currently on sale for $4, which did bait me into it. I really just don't know if it's uh, a good price point for this game. At least not until it, it gets a combat patch. But anyway, that does about wrap up the review of Uchu Shinshuchu now on the Nintendo Switch. So if you enjoyed the review, or especially if you found it helpful, feel free to throw us a like or a comment to show your support, and don't forget to click that little bell icon when you subscribe to stay updated with the latest content. And as we are putting out reviews twice a week on Mondays and Fridays, chances are that regardless of if it's an easy hard pass or an absolutely unforgettable gem, you're probably going to find out about it right here. But anyway, this has been the Budget Gamers. As always, thanks for watching.